All right, what's up, Dragon Brew? Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a few really, really interesting new cards from Dominaria United, mostly because they work with auras. So we're gonna be playing some mostly blue-white auras, and you'll see what I mean here in a second. But if you've been looking for a way to play those, and you have these cards sitting around in your collection, this might be the deck for you, give you a use for some of those cards. Let's hop right in and take a look at what this auras deck is gonna look like today. I want to take a quick chance to say I appreciate all of you that have become YouTube members here on the channel. Some of you have already taken advantages of some of the freebies we have. And don't forget that if you are one of the higher levels, you do have access to get your deck looked at and get your stuff featured here. If you'd like to protect your cards and your nerd gear, check out ultrapro.com slash power dragon. Use promo code power dragon and you'll save 5%. And they'll give me a little kickback here on the channel and help me out. All right. So going down this list. It's going to look mostly like what you think, but we're going to talk about a couple of cards in here. So we have Circle of Confinement. Obviously, we're trying to keep stuff off the board, and we're playing enchantments, so this is what we want to do. Right alongside Fate Plasmus, which is not an actual enchantment, mind you, I understand, but we do have to be able to get rid of Planeswalkers, and sometimes at instant speed, maybe get rid of something like Shieldred or whatever, so this is just making the cut. Unfortunately, I ran out of room for stuff like Fading Hope, so this is in here. We are playing Spirited Companion, because it's also a creature that happens to be an enchantment. A Mischievous Cat, guys. This is going to let us draw some cards, but most importantly, it has Disturb, which allows it to be put on something, and this is going to be key for a couple other things in the deck we'll get to in a second. We're going to try out some Dorothea, because, well, it's a 4-4, and if it works, you put it on something, and now you're attacking with a 4-4 as well. I don't know how often this is really going to work, but I'm at least giving it a go here. Now, the first of the new cards we're going to talk about is Ivy making the cut in this list. And it's actually kind of interesting, right? Because if we put an aura on one of our other things, then we get to put something on Ivy, and that's kind of cool. So we'll see how that works out. Don't know yet, but it seems like it should be sweet. So <laughs> I know a bunch of you have been asking, hey, do you have a deck for Ivy? I have another one that I'm working on. So you might see another Ivy deck sometime in the next week. But for now, this is where she's going to live while we try this out. Then we got four borrowed time because this card's actually pretty damn cool. Removes anything and it happens to be an enchantment. We have three Catilda Dawn Heart Martyr, which randomly does have the byproduct of being protected from vampires. And that's actually pretty cool considering there are some vampires being played. So nice. But mostly we want this for the lifelink more than anything. But it does give something else flying and happens to be an aura with Disturbed. We're playing a couple of Restoration of Iganjo. I think this is really neat just to help us get the extra land. It also turns into a creature, which is nice. Makes us extra tokens, which happen to be spirits. So that's also great for something like Katilda. We're going to be playing a couple of Brinecomber. This card's kind of awkward, but also kind of interesting. Because it doesn't really make the creature bigger that you put it on, but it just lets you go wide. And when you have stuff that cares about spirits, then that makes a lot of sense. Especially when that thing is hallowed haunting, and you can give those spirits flying. So... Yeah, we're pretty excited about that, playing all these together. And then, of course, the other new card we're going to take a look at is Vesumvin Duplomancy. Now, Duplomancy is pretty cool because if you target something with Aura, then you get to make another copy of a thing. What's interesting is because you have Ivy, and she says, well, if you target another thing, then the other thing gets to target Ivy. Well, this says, if a thing targeted... <laughs> so we're going to see how this works out. I don't think it actually makes an extra copy even from the Ivy, but it's interesting. Bare minimum, though, you put it on something and get to copy the other creature. And we do have several things with Disturb that are going to make auras we put on stuff, so it should be fine. But we're going to see. We're going to try this out and see what the heck happens. Then our lands, we have two Iganjo, six Plains, two Islands, four Attica Waste, four Deserted Beach, four Yabamaya Coast, and four Sparas Headquarters. One of the things that allows this deck to work is specifically because we got Yabamaya's Coast and we already had Sparas Headquarters. So we have the right lands to make this happen. So we're just going to see if it does anything. So as always, we're going to play the games. I'm going to say this is probably going to be another one of those videos that we're going to stop somewhere in the middle and probably update this deck as things are changing or not working. So you may want to check through uh, on the timeline, see what the next deck looks like. And we're also going to wrap up at the end of the video after we play all the games and talk about what's good, bad, what problems you should have with this deck or whatever. So anyway, enjoy the games and I'll catch you somewhere in the middle with an update, I guess. Oh, you know what? Let's see. We can cast Ivy on two... Yeah, all right. We'll see. I'm not sold that this is a good hand. This might be totally wrong. But you know what? Let's go find out. 
Yep, we gotta take some damage for this. I mean, I assume Ivy can just get removed here if this is a green-white deck. Nope, it's a green-red deck. Ah, that's worse, actually. Let's see what happens, though. Hey, we get to keep Ivy for a turn. Look at that. That wasn't the worst thing. Could have been much worse. Uh, matter of fact... I think we're just going to attack with Ivy. Then I'm place Bar as headquarters. And this will give me an opportunity to play either of these cards next turn that I feel I need. Yep. You get a 2 2 duder. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, they may or may not. I don't know what, what they're doing, so who knows? I have no idea what's about to come down here. They were willing to attack. We're going to not block. Probably bad against a red-green deck here. We should probably be conserving our life total and get this Geist in the yard. But you know what? I'm into it. All right. We can... I guess we just play this. This feels more correct. Actually, I should have attacked first, got a card, because I could have changed my opinion on things. Well, I didn't. All right. Didn't get punished, though I should have. All right, opponent's got their mana. So what goes on here? I'm actually looking, hopefully, for one of our exile enchantments would be great, because then we could play, especially if it's like confinement. Oh, well, that's no good. Looks like everybody's on Terra Sunder these days now. I mean, if they are, they are. Nothing we can do about it. Maybe they want to get rid of the duplicity, too? I don't know. But now, any enchantment's good here. Um... This is interesting, because if we block and put this in the yard, we could play Katilda, target Katilda. And then get two Katilda. I, you know, I'm kind of into that. Let's, let's do it. It's kind of a random play, but if it works... Oh, there's an Ivy. I was not expecting to draw that. Is that any better? Not really. Nah. Alright, target. Alright, we have two big Katildas. And if they attack, we're blocking with the token 4-4. Four four so that we can keep the other one. And then if it goes to the graveyard, then we'll play Ivy and target it with the Katilda, and then we get two Ivies. Oh, Thundering Raiju, though, has something to say about things. Ah, so this, the opponent doesn't realize we have lifelink, right? Like, that's a real thing. So we're just gonna take five here, gain four. I think I'm okay with that exchange. Wait, are they not putting the counter on? I was going to say, you have to be putting the counter on the Raiju, right? Yeah, we just block. Okay, seems good. Oh, but we didn't get anything. All right, at least we have an Igonjo we can still use. So we're, we're not completely out. Um... We attack, we go to 10. Here's here's the thing. We almost have to attack and go to 10. Because if we don't and they kill Katilda, we don't get anything. So we gotta at least take the three life. Because if they kill Katilda and attack otherwise, we're risking dying. So we're gonna go ahead, gain our three. We also get a card. Okay, there we go. That that wasn't so bad. Um this will only costs two because we have... Actually, we have Katilda and Ivy, so they're both legendaries. So never mind. Doesn't really matter. We off this thing. All right. It's 
kind of sort of slowly doing something here. <laughs> it's not pretty at the moment, but we're, we're making a go of it. Opponent has a lot of cards in hand here, and we have virtually nothing, so we need some help. Urabrask. That's annoying. He's good stuff, though. I'm a fan of the card, but uh, we will be killing that. No blocks. Hey, Dorothea. We like that. We will attack. Alright, gain five, get a card. Spirited Companion. We'll do that, get a card. A Brine Comer. Sure. I don't know what the opponent would do here that would matter. So, yeah, whatever. All right, we've got our forces built up and a big old Catilda. I don't know what Gruul does against this. Also now, if Dorothea dies or Brian Comer dies, then we get a whole bunch of things because then we target anything, probably Spirit Companion or something, and then Ivy's going to get a copy, and then, yeah, it gets silly after that. This, this is about as good of a pile as we could assemble, I think. The opponent does still have blockers. Okay, but they die. Uh, yeah, this seems good. Let's do it. We will just go ahead, play a Spirited Companion, have actual removal for something, and maybe try to duplicity, duplomancy. I don't know what we do after that if we don't find anything. Though, restoration is a little nicer. So that gives us a quality play next turn if there's nothing great to kill. Oh, and a borrowed time. Look at that. That's not so bad. And the good thing here, honestly, against the black deck, is that the only way they really have to get rid of enchantments is, like, Invoke Despair. And if we just have a pile of enchantments, we don't really care. Like, we just pick and choose what they get rid of. Which means, also, with our current hand, we're not worried about Shieldred. We're not really worried about Liliana, which we're probably going to see right now. But, oh no, Shakedown Heavy. Okay. Not particularly a thing I thought we were going to see. Um, Let's go ahead and put a land into play. Seems fine. And then... Hmm... I'm just debating if we, how badly we want to kill the Shakedown Heavy or remove it. I think, though, we do with this. Mostly because next turn we can play Duplomancy and still have Fateful Absence up if we need it. Interesting. Opponent does not have... All right, all right. Well... We will attack. Not killing the creature. Okay. We will go ahead and play this then. And the turn. I mean, even if there are plans to play Invoke Despair, I mean, we have plenty of things to sacrifice. So uh, we can even give them the Shakedown Heavy back. Oh, now they're going to get us. Well, that's a cut down. That's fine. So now they get a heavy. We're going to try to hold on to this Hallowed Haunting, because that's pretty important with a handful of enchantments. Just a cruelty of Gix, actually. Okay. What are we going to go searching for? Kind of curious. I don't know. I mean, this obviously, it sort of looks like it could have been an aggressive deck, but I don't know what they're aiming for here. Maybe, well, no, because uh, I guess they could. I was just thinking, like, the exile, all things X or less sort of thing, maybe. Because that thing exists. Whatever we call that. The new artifact. Yep. You have a duder. Seems good. Get a card. Lots of value. All right, let's see what they do here. 
Invoke Despair. Sure. And we'll just give you this. We knew Despairs were coming, so that's not a shocker. All right. Untap land, maybe? Maybe sorta? Not land, but I guess well, yeah, yeah, that's fine, I guess. We can play both of these. I didn't want a planes, but that's that's fine. Doesn't greatly matter, I suppose. And we'll probably see a meat hook here. Cause they haven't had anything to meat hook the whole game, so obviously if you're gonna meat hook, now's the time. But then we just want a creature so we can put the brine comer on something and then get a whole pile of things and just make their opponent's life terrible. Ah, oh, of course it exiles. Gosh dang it. All this exile removal. That If there's one... Like, that's one of my big gripes, though. It's like so much removal that exiles takes away the ability of a lot of cards and stuff that's been printed recently, and it's kind of sad. All right, let's see if we find something good. Man, yeah, that qualifies as good. I'm in. All right, get them attacks going. All right, opponent goes to seven. I'm assuming meat hook somewhere around the corner, right? No, they're just drawing cards here. Well, you can't meat hook for four now, so that's good. Yeah, it was just a handful of removal, but we just have things that make a bunch of tokens. All right. Can we get anything that pumps our team? Or do we even need it? If they only have two blockers. Nah, it's not going to matter. Actually, it will. Because one has death touch. Yeah, we're still going to attack with everything, though. Whoa. What? What? If I'm not mistaken, the opponent could have blocked in a way that they would have went to one, right? Because they had two blockers. That we had three four fours. They blocked two of them. A four gets through and two ones. That's only six, and they were at seven, right? I'll have to watch it in editing, but I... I don't know. That was a strange situation. I don't know if they would come back anyway, but, you know, still interesting. Hmm. Man, we can't keep this, I don't think. That's a little bit too slow. All right, we can keep this. Let's get rid of the planes. Seems fine. And we'll just see how this works out. Oh, boy. All right, well, at least we have... This is going to be like dueling exile enchantments. Is that what's going to happen here? All right, we got a borrowed time. Though I feel like it's going to be borrowed time, your borrowed time, and then that whole silliness. But if it is, it is. Not a lot we can do. Yep, no blocks. Uh, that's not going to help us. Hmm. I think I'm going to take a turn off here. This feels somewhat safe. Could be lying to myself. We'll find out. Uh, no attacks. I mean, okay, wedding announcement. All right, all right. I feel like we may want to get rid of the wedding announcement. Yeah, we'll just take three more. Um, yeah, we'll just do this for free. Dorothea, that's a thing. Hmm. I guess we need to do something that costs three this turn, and then do something that costs five in total next turn. So that makes the most sense. Let's go with that. No attacks. I mean, they can always just get rid of our borrowed time, which they probably are, but... 
Nope, there's no generous visitor. And now borrowed time. Oh no, fight rigging. Whoop. That's a thing. Okay then. That definitely happened. Okay, well we need a removal card for a uh, generous visitor here. Or this is going to suck quite a bit. All right. Plans have most definitely changed. Okay, that helps. And it still sticks with our original Dorothea plan, so that's fine. Gonna go ahead and play this first, so Arena can't tap anything crazy for me. And then we'll play this. Get rid of this duder. And uh, I'm willing to attack with this, because you're not gonna block with your visitor. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. All right, Kami, into another Kami. Okay, annoying, but we can deal with that. Ooh. Ooh, well, how now, brown cow? What are we going to do with this? Dorothy costs three, so we can, we can, no, nah, we can't do both of these this turn. But we do get a token when we attack. <sighs> do we need to save this to block or attack? We are at 13. Alright. Here's the plan. We'll just see how the opponent feels about it. They've got two cards left, so we're taking a little bit of a gamble, but I'm into it. We'll get rid of the bigger body here. I'm alright with that. And then we go with this. And then hope we survive the turn. Oh, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt a lot. All right, plus another three. So that's seven. Yep, eight. All right. Oh, uh, and they had a Paragon. My goodness. Yeah. That's no good. Golly. Welp. Hmm. I think we're just GG's. Opponent's got us on this one. Yeah, we're not doing anything. This draw was entirely too slow. No early removal cards, and their draw was great. They deserve to win this. Yeah, that doesn't help. Golly. Hmm. This is rather interesting. Let's keep it and see what happens. I don't know if double borrow time is going to be the answer here, but let's find out. I'm going to assume it's not going to be. However, we got a Ivy, so let's go ahead and play it. Not the card you really want in the early. It's not the turn two play we want, but it's mostly fine. Nope, are we going to bounce it? And they also have an Ivy. Now this is weird. If a player casts a spell that targets only a single target other than Ivy, you may have the copy target. Okay, so I don't have to target our Ivy. So sure, let's get rid of theirs, because their deck is probably based around Ivy. And we don't want that. Ours is like, Ivy's a nice bonus. Other decks probably are trying to play Ivy as the win condition, and we don't want that. Um, okay, well, again, don't have to deal with the opponent's Ivies, though I feel like now they have a way to give it Hexproof and protect it, and this is probably not going to resolve. Uh, yeah, we'll take an action. I'll get a big IV too. That seems fun. Like, why not? I deserve a big Ivy. Gonna pile everything up on it? Sure, why not? Sure. Okay. Now we get the option of... Hmm. 
Hmm. If we restoration this turn, we're still alive, most likely. And we get to get a land. And then it gives us six next turn. That's not that much better. So I think we just do this. And this. And hope the opponent doesn't have an answer. Sorry about that, y'all. I have some uh, notifications going off. Okay, hopefully that cleared that up. Yeah, we're not getting to keep this, Katilda. <laughs> like, we all know we're not getting to keep it. Uh, take the action. Why not? This is weird with dueling ivies. This is kind of interesting, though. So we take six. We attack. We'll gain five. So really not a concern there. Man, I would love if we could get, like, two mana enchantment. And be able to play Hallowed Haunting plus enchantment. That would be really cool. Uh, yeah, we'll take the action. The opponent's basically just loading up our ivy for us. Like, this is hilarious. I mean, I'm cool if you want to attack. <laughs> that's actually pretty solid now admittedly we know they're playing slip out the backs and blah blah and all that other good stuff so whatever but in the meantime and I think I'm gonna wait I think I'm gonna wait the opponent's doing a good job loading our ivy up we don't have a need to attack here and if they tap out we just kill their ivy all right, what else you got? Nothing? All right, I guess we'll attempt it. Why does it ask me if I want to? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do they have something that gives it hexproof or something? What's on it? Oh, it's because of Legendary. It has Ward 1. I forgot. Well, that's definitely a thing to know. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just do this then for the time being. All right. I don't know what type of counters they had, which is why I was doing that, but it looks like they don't have a counter. So, do we attack with Katilda here? That's the real question. I think the answer is yes. Nah, we'll pass. We'll pass. No attacks in the turn. Because we can try to just kill Ivy on the, during their end step. And then if they save it, ours is alive. And then we just try for a big attack. Uh, yeah, that's fine. This is so amusing. I didn't even think about Ivy as a defense against Ivy. But this is kind of amusing, really. Please don't have... Uh, we will not get the target on ours. All right, they're going to slip out the back. All right, so we, I, this is a stack I have to look at. All right, so this is saying the first one is the slip out the back. So we will take that one. And then this is Fateful Absence. So we'll decline that one. That is also Fateful Absence. We will. Oh, for the ward. We'll decline. Oh, wait. Oh, because they're... Oh, crap. I did that all wrong. Well, it doesn't matter. Because they they exiled it anyway. So, yeah. Whatever. That was a weird sequence. Too many, too many things there with the ivy. And then we just play this. And then we attack for maximum. If they bounce something or whatever, they bounce it. We don't care. I mean, we got all the enchantments and whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's that's fine. Uh, do we want that other plus one? No. We're going to decline and deal maximum damage. And then we get some cards. Thanks to the help from the opponent. Those were absolutely worthless. Opponents at five. They will get to draw some extra cards here when they attack, but we're probably chump blocking with some spirit of some variety. Probably the cat guys. Uh, what does this do? Plus two in game trample. Yeah, take action. 
I want a big ivy too. This this is a wild game. I'm glad we got this on camera. Like this is so amusing. Yeah, we won that one. That was weird. Oh boy. Man, this is one I almost wish we were going first. But this might be okay still. And Faithful Absence, Borrowed Time. Set up an Ivy just to get killed, probably. See if we can get Duplomancy out at some point. Alright, we'll keep it. It's not bad enough to throw back, that's for sure. Mm, that might be helpful somewhere along the way. A dig up, okay. Interesting. I wonder if they were just light on mana and they're trying to set up a play for later. Unfortunately, we don't have a two mana play. Well, I guess technically we do. All right. Interesting that they're playing four colors. Wonder what four. I bet we're about to find out. Oh, they wanted Ivy dead, dead. That's fine. Wasn't really part of our plans. I just thought about, you know, the interesting thing is when you have this much blue mana, they're probably assuming we have counters, but we're really not playing any. Cartographer survey. Look at seven and put two lands from among them onto the battlefield. Okay. Well, that happened. We're probably going to get run over by something absurd. All right. Well, I'm <laughs> just going, ah, all right. that, that happened. I mean, this is mo. I mean, we can get rid of whatever threats they play. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's Titan. Now, we kind of have to kill Titan with a Fateful Absence. Because if we were to try and kill a Titan with a Borrowed Time, and then they play another Titan, we'd be looking kind of silly. So, nah, with double Borrowed Time, how did we feel? Hmm. <laughs> this, this actually becomes a real thing. What are the odds that they're holding on extra tight? I guess we'll go ahead and try once. Whatever. If you got it, you got it. I'm willing to eat it if they have it. I mean, they could also have Terra Sunder or who knows what, right? It could be like eight other things. Which might be what they're about to go tutor up. Do the creature or planeswalker? Sure. We have a Catilda. Actually, I guess we have a Brinecomber as well. Oh, they didn't want us to have the Brinecomber, though. Hmm. And they were okay with us having the Catilda in hand. Why is that, friend? That feels highly suspicious. Hmm. I guess maybe they don't have a way to get rid of our creature if we put a Catilda on it. I'm also wondering if we need to... You know what? I guess we gotta remove this. And then we just play the... I mean, if you were that afraid of it, I mean... Cool. Now, if they do get rid of our board, we have to find something to put a creature on. That's the other problem. But if not, then I guess we just go for it. Okay, they get to dig up an answer here. Don't know what it is yet. Probably an exile spell, if I were guessing. If they have access to them. They're cycling, so it's probably another titan. Okay. Titan to get back a titan to kill the other thing. All right. That would make sense. Don't think we're going to block. Oh, boy. All right. This at least forces an issue with their titan. They've got a decision to make. Okay. So they probably get rid of Hallowed Haunting and a Borrowed Time, get their Titan back. That all makes sense. 
Because that's what I would do. Yep. Though, you know, they might take a turn off. Get yeah, Exactly, kill that one and then just go get the last Titan. I mean, that's that's a real thing too. And then just play Titan next turn. Now, that does mean we have to find something to get out of trouble here, and I don't know what that would look like just yet. So that's a whole separate problem, but it would also mean we have all the Titans on board, so if we could find a way to work around that, that would be great. Yeah, no blocks. Come on, things. Uh, that was a thing, but not the thing we're looking for. Neither is that. Oh, so that's bad times. All right. I guess we just got to let it roll. Unfortunately, we did not draw anything. We just drew dead there. Yep. And now they have our Ivy, and that's bad news. Man, if I haven't had, like, uh, earlier, like, Catgeist or something in there, that would have been cool. All right. GG's. All right, while that's interesting, I don't think this version is doing quite what we want it to do. And I think there's some ways we could fix that, actually. I don't think Ivy and the Ivy plan in and of itself is great. I, I don't think that's really where we need to be necessarily. We also were a little light on threats, so I would like to go like heavier on like Brian Comer's restorations. I don't feel like Dorothea was good enough. It's a very neat card. <clears throat> and having a 4-4 early blocker is kind of nice, but I don't think it does quite enough. Probably want to cut one Duplomancy, I think. And then I was just thinking about, like, what other things we want to have, right? Because, what is this? Put us at 11 creatures, though we do have stuff like Restorations or whatever that makes creatures. I was thinking there's the Saga that draw and discard, if we wanted that to be a thing. Uh, Modern Age. Haven't really played much with it, but it's something that makes sense. We could go to a fourth Catilda, potentially. Maybe another Restoration could help. Maybe another Mischievous Cat Geist, because that gets us extra cards. Don't know if those are enough. Uh, there's also the option to play uh, the other Saga that lets us... This, Machiko's Reign of Truth. So, like, this is another option we have available to us if we just want more damage, which is reasonable i mean there is a case to be made for that i don't know if it's what we need to be trying to do or not but this feels a little bit cleaner and just seems like we don't need to waste our time actually i'm even fine playing a 61st card we could just play the extra duplomancy because that's kind of what this is about and this is probably closer to where we want to be and not goofing around with the ivy stuff so much which also means we could cut some lands uh that are doing damage to us and whatever uh, what are we at here? 27 white, 10 blue. All right, let's do it like this. Something like that is probably accurate. I mean, I don't even know if we need Spara's headquarters. I like having a way to draw extra cards later, but maybe that's not the answer either. Just go ahead and make sure we can cast our stuff is probably smarter. Uh, that's only 8, 13 things for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blue cards. Uh, 10 because of Brian Comer. That's probably a bit too much. Let's balance that out a little bit. Now, the other thing is we could open ourselves up to play stuff like an Ottawara, which I think is probably reasonable. Because I believe we could bounce one of our own things if we wanted to. Uh, return target artifact creature in time. Yeah, so if we did need to just replay one of our things or protect one of our things, I think that's better. So let's go ahead and give this a run real quick. Let's see what we can do with this one. All right, we get to go first. Let's keep this. And I kind of want to just play Cat Geist, I guess, on one, or I mean on two and see what the opponent does. Maybe we'll get lucky and they just play another tap land and leave our Geist alone. I doubt it, but you know, hopes and dreams. Concealed curtains. Ooh, if we could find a way to remove a concealed curtain. Oh, okay, of course we didn't. <laughs> There was a chance, though. There was a chance. Uh, what do we want to do here? Could go ahead and do this. Opponent's going to make us discard something anyway, so it's probably going to be Hallowed Haunting. All right, I'm going to do this. 
mostly because it encourages the opponent to kill the Katilda instead of getting rid of a Hallowed Haunting. It gives a chance to at least get it into play. It's probably not going to matter because they probably have ways to destroy it anyway, but, you know, play to your strengths and all that. Okay, we're still going to lose it. So, I guess we get Duplomancy instead. Oh, they didn't want us to have the Duplomancy and they gave us the Hallowed Haunting. That's not what I expected to happen. What's going on here? Okay, I, I'll i take it. Um, well, I should have just got the extra point in, actually. I was being too worried about what land we were going to drop, but that was silly. I just cost ourselves a point for no reason. Actually, two, really, because it costs one life off of theirs and one plus on ours. Yeah, I don't know what that last... Okay, opponent's just going for it, but you do realize we have a Katilda. I mean, I guess Katilda's going to die here? Uh huh. Nope, there's a wedding announcement. I mean, I feel like our plan is just keep on keeping on here, I guess. I don't know what the opponent's doing. I mean, here we go. I mean, Duplomancy would have been kind of cool with us having this in hand, and we could have, you know, been doing Katilda things or whatever, but I think the opponent's too far behind now. And they know we have this. So this is another thing that turns those into bigger creatures. And if you kill Katilda now, I just give something else bigger. Fun. Okay, you exile it. That works. That's a real answer. Ooh. Ooh. That's real good. Yeah, at this point, I'm just saving the Katilda. No point in even putting it in the yard. We get to draw and discard. Probably just going to be a Plains. Yep. And yeah, there you go. Sorry, Kitchen all up here in the middle of this game. Uh, forgot to hit record to start with there. So we're just kind of rolling this from the beginning. But... Play this out. Probably gets countered. But we'd rather that than a Katilda at this stage. Uh, the Poland and I both mulliganed going into this one, by the way. I don't know. Let's see. These blue decks are playing like empty counters, so we just kind of got to deal with it. Yep, another make disappear. Do 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 haughty gin. Alright, I guess we'll try to remove it with this. They obviously have something to protect it. Nope, they have a negate. Alright, and then we'll just kill the dude. What you got? Storm Chaser Drake. Alright. Something to put on it? No, nothing to put on it. Which means we're holding another counter, huh? Well, the good news is, if they do have a counter, it's the last thing in their hand. Excellent. Then we get to play this. And now we have a pile of things to put on our duder. And we can start the war. Alright. Another Drake. That probably would have been fine for them. Okay, now they're just digging. That's good for us. Nope, that's bad for us. Because <laughs> they do have three mana counters. We're kind of hoping. Alright, let's sample things first. So if they deal with this, then we just recast... If they bounce like our, our companion, we'll just recast it. Okay, try to attack. Oh, they had a shore up. Okay, that's fine. That could have been worse. But if I had played a land, which I should have, I would have been able to bounce their Storm Chaser Drake. So that's a mistake on my part. I deserve all the negativity there. I could have saved us and we would have had extra cards in hand, which would have been great. Uh, yeah, obviously those are counters or something. I think I'm just going to pass.
I was gonna see if I could catch the opponent with something, but it looks like no. All right, cat guys, I guess it's all you, friend. All right, cat guys, I was not expecting that to resolve. Weird. Are these not defensive cards for the Drake? Hmm. All right. Let's see what gets countered. All right. So now you're going to make a... Oh. Really? I was thinking they were going to try to protect it and we were going to have to bounce it. But now I, I don't know. Uh, in the turn, I guess it's a handful of counters of the wrong kind or something. I don't know. Or maybe they're looking for a hotty gin that they could easily protect here. I mean, we obviously didn't get a lot of threats, so we're kind of up against it. I mean, they did discard a land, right? No, they didn't. Hmm. I mean, we'll try. There's no way this is resolving, but like, we gotta do something. And the Catilda's just not big enough to be a legit threat at this point in time. This we don't care about, because if it gets countered, like, we'll just put it on our cat next turn. Yep, that's fine. Actually, you know what? We can just do that now. Deal with it. You get the gin, you get the gin. We'll just have to deal with it. Well, that might do something. All right. Another cat. Not the worst thing in the world. Might as well try to play one. Sure. Alright, that's coast is clear now. It's gonna be Catilda time. Well... I guess it's really going to be Catilda time. Yep. Who did it. All right, so I feel like we have like a good news, bad news situation here. The bad news is Ivy didn't work out nearly as much. The good news is we actually found a version of this that we actually enjoyed, which is the second version. And honestly, that's okay, because like I said, I have some other stuff I'm working on for Ivy, so that's mostly fine. But about this deck in particular, I think it's still fine against a lot of things. Unfortunately, we are super weak to any of the stuff that's going to be reanimating Titans. That's just going to be a real problem for this deck. Mostly because Titans are big. They also block Katildas until they're huge. They get rid of all of our enchantments. It can also be hard to remove it. You know, so if they get into a point where they get the second Titan, that's where it really piles up on us. If they have any type of real start. So that's pretty difficult. We are about 50-50 against the black decks of the mono black. You do have to manage your creatures very well, so you don't necessarily get wrecked by something like uh, Invoke Despair. That's a real thing. We can, for the most part, keep Shieldred under control, so that's not a huge deal. But you do have issues if your opponents get a hyper-aggressive start a lot of times. So we have to get those early confinements, Fateful Absence, or whatever. If you don't get those, you're in for a real tough battle against something like Boros Aggro or even one of the Gruul modified decks or something. So there are some things you're going to struggle with, but there's other stuff that really end up not being that big of a deal. We're seeing a lot of like awkward control type decks. We're seeing a bunch of the mono blue spell counter heavy decks, and those are actually beatable surprisingly, but it's partly because we just have a bunch of stuff that works out of the graveyard. We have things that make extra tokens. So you kind of just have to lean on what your benefits are and just play around those expecting there to be counters. But outside of that, I don't know, this seems okay. I wasn't expecting it to work. And honestly, I'm not sure it totally did with Ivy in there initially. There was some funny stuff that happened, but I wouldn't call it consistent. But we did much better in the second version. 
Now, knowing that the second version played much better, I think we're gonna make that one the version for download, which I'm sure is gonna disappoint some people that we're not making it the Ivy version, but truthfully, I think they're gonna be happier with this one. And just sit tight, we'll try to get to another Ivy deck. But for today's card spotlight, we're gonna talk about Derevi. And Derevi is a big pain in the butt, mostly because he kind of breaks the rule in the spirit of Commander. This is actually one of the commanders that a lot of the, we'll call them Commander purists, are actually not happy with Wizards about because you don't really have a downside, you just keep putting it into play. Even worse, for whatever reason, they didn't make it to where you had to put it in play as a sorcery at least, which would have been nice. You just pay the cost and you put it into play, which seems so unreal that that's a thing on a commander, but hey, they tried it out. We haven't seen it since, I don't think, uh, but there are ones like Edgar where the ability just works from the command zone, which is silly. But either way, we haven't seen either of those things repeated in a while. And if you do want a Derevi, it's actually pretty affordable because of reprints and such. You should be able to pick them up between two and three dollars. And if you enjoyed today's deck and you like playing stuff that's different and awkward and still pretty good, check out the Namada deck we got here. I almost couldn't even say that. But that's all I got for you for now. We'll see you next time.